This episode is brought to you by PentesterAcademy.com, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Be sure to check out our latest attack defense gadgets on HackerArsenal.com. everyone. I'm sitting down here today with Sergei Skorobogotov. Thank you so much for being with us. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And so will you tell me a little bit about what you do? Uh, so I'm a senior research associate at the University of Cambridge. So I do research in uh, hardware security, analyzing various devices for vulnerabilities and uh, how to find the solutions to, um, to improve the security of those devices. Okay, and so you also did a talk today. I know you just finished up as well. Will you tell me a little bit about what your talk was about? Uh, the talk was about analyzing three uh, real-world devices for for the security. One was uh, iPhone 5C and uh, w whether the um, NAND mirroring process works or not because uh, there was a, a big case a year ago between FBI and Apple where FBI wanted Apple to, to come up with the solution to break into the iPhone and the FBI uh, claimed that uh, the NAND mirroring process doesn't work so my, but that project was about uh, proving them wrong. Another project was about analyzing car keys, how secure they are and proving that uh, certain claims from uh, the car manufacturers were not correct. And the third, talk, uh, third part of the talk was about the medical devices, the, uh, the insulin uh, wireless uh, tubeless pump that uh, I reverse engineered to help uh, uh, the community of uh, type 1 diabetes people who want to build uh, artificial pancreas to, to help uh, these people to, to, to live a better life. Okay, I see. And so now, these are all things that I guess you wouldn't really think about normally. They're all such advanced devices, and it seems that security was an afterthought. Would you would you agree with that? Is it more? Is it an issue now? Uh, well, uh, I think it is the security that made all, all the. Uh, um, the, the research I, I did uh, important because uh, the start of the security, those devices would be relatively straightforward to analyze. And, and then uh, whenever you want to understand how those devices work, you, you come across the hardware security and you have to come up with uh, non-standard solutions. Mm. And so do you think that, you know, it's not going to be just medical devices? Do you think that there's a lot of other devices that we're going to have issues with as well that we haven't even thought about before possibly? Mm. Well, I think um, all modern devices, they have to have uh, uh, some security protections uh, in one, one way or another because they, they, are, they either have to protect uh, uh, confidentiality of uh, information, some uh, uh, information about the real people, or they, uh, they need to, uh, to be uh, secure against someone uh, breaking into them. So it's mainly about the um, confidentiality of information and the, uh, uh, the, the making the devices uh, secure so, so that no one else can use them. Okay. And so what do you think that they could do in the field to better improve, you know, their response with this? What do you think? Mm, not quite sure. <laughs> well, it's a... So the, the security of the devices uh, can only be improved by by the manufacturer. So you, you can, by doing the research in that area, you can show some vulnerabilities in in, in these devices, and then you can attract the attention from uh, the uh, the manufacturers. But it's up to them to to implement the protections, and uh, it's sometimes it's surprising what. Uh, a type of devices they use. For example, the part of my talk was about uh, car keys security, and I found that uh, they still uh, sell in the, the cars that cost more than 100,000 euros, and they use uh, semiconductor chips which are 20 years old inside. So, and obviously, those chips are not as secure as uh, they should be. So I was going to ask, actually, now, would you say that there's like quite a bit of a job gap within the security field? Do you, do you feel that it's lacking or it needs more, you know, people involved? Um, well, I think that hardware security area is uh, really needs more people to, to be involved because, for example, in uh, one of the projects, uh, 
that I, I was carrying out. I, I did have a really hard job finding the the, the researcher to, to join the project because uh, uh, it's really difficult to find s someone experienced and knowledgeable in, in that area, and uh, uh, even for the University of Cambridge. But uh, I guess for other universities, it, it's even more challenging. Yeah. What do you What do you think that they could do to kind of help pull people in and try to, you know, make it more enticing to work in the cybersecurity field? Well, I guess it's the lack of um, uh, the student courses at, at uh, the universities that uh, uh, offer uh, education in the hardware security area. Because you will find a lot of uh, teaching done for uh, software programming, for uh, network security, for all this software related and uh, network and internet things. But very few uh, universities and courses are available uh, when it comes to the semiconductor security, to the hardware security. So that I think is the, the main problem. I see. It's pretty much just lack of lack of jobs and awareness in general. I see, and so just within your experience, you know, I'm sure you've had many years in this field. What it is? What's something that you know scares you the most or shocks you in in the growing threats of cybersecurity? I think it's what um, manufacturers tell about the real security of their devices because they they want to sell uh, as many devices as they want so they actually hide the uh, the information about the, the actual situation in the in the protection of their devices in uh, in a hope that they, they can sell more so they invest as little as possible into the uh, security features and then uh, they hope that no one will will hack the, the device and uh, if something bad happens then they uh, usually tell uh, their customers to, to go and buy uh, more advanced uh, devices so they they don't take the responsibility for for their failures I see. It's almost more of an afterthought. Do you think that they almost do this on purpose sometimes and just or they are just careless, would you say, and don't think about it till something happens and then it's too late? I don't think it's done on purpose. So it's uh, it's a lack of expertise and, and uh, the careless in, and, and, um, in the design process. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with us today. I really appreciate the time. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. 